I was supposed to be an observer. When I first came to the Kalasha Valleys in northern Pakistan to conduct PhD dissertation research on Kalasha women's culture, I was stunned by the din and buzz of daily life in this small pastoral place. I taped it on my state-of-the-art cassette recorder, thinking no one would believe me otherwise. But when I came home two years later and played it to astonish my friends and colleagues, I didn't hear chaotic noise anymore. I heard the very particular words and voices of individual men, women, and children who had become real to me. Even though I was especially interested in observing their bashali, the communal menstrual house where women went when they were menstruating and to give birth, I'd never actually held a newborn before. I waited anxiously for the birth of Talim Khan and Nana's child. When the time came, together with the midwife, we walked the half mile up valley to the Bashali in the middle of the night, our way lit by little torches of resin soaked wood. The birth was quick. The baby boy was big and healthy. The midwife cut the cord, swaddled him up, and then made a special sweet cream of wheat porridge for Talim Khan and Nana. All night we Bashali women, even me, took turns holding the baby around the fire while his mother slept. Talim Khan and Nana said I was his aunt, and said I should have a baby girl, and then we would marry our children and we'd be called to bar. I documented the many rituals and visitations that happen in babies' first weeks of life as they are blessed and welcomed into the community. Then, about a week after mother and child came home, he got sick. With the help of my now-worn copy of Where There Is No Doctor, I decided that he had pneumonia. A penicillin shot would likely cure him, the book said. Boys from the neighborhood raced to find the only young man in the valley with keys to the dispensary, but he had gone to the high pastures and was several hours away. The other women from Chetguru took turns walking around with the baby. But sometimes I was the one holding him and in between his heaving breaths he was so still, so blue. Look, I said, let's take him to Chitral. There's a jeep in the bazaar. Let's go. But Talim Khan and Nana said she wanted to wait for her husband to come home. Surely he would come home soon, and then he would come with me to take the baby. I said we should go now. I said I would pay for the jeep. I would pay for the hospital. She said, surely he'll come. Let's wait. I was 26, just married, didn't have kids, didn't even know how to bake a cake. But I realized that I could have taken that baby, with or without his mother, and gone to Chitral. She would have let me. They all would have let me. But I didn't. Instead, I sat outside on the ground and held the baby as the other women, one by one, went home to tend to their own children. One last huge gasp for breath ended in stillness. I don't remember what happened exactly after that, but someone took the dead baby from me and sent me home. I didn't write about this, or the funeral that followed, or even the birth in any of my work. I finished my dissertation, published a book, but after my daughters were born, I never went back to the field.